Hello, this is Professor Kim Nelson with the Jewelry Design Department at FIT. Another tutorial for our bypass ring project, uh, JD237, uh, 3D modeling in Rhino. I'm going to commence working out the uh, setting for my piece. So I'm going to borrow um, some of the components I had before from my maquette. Ungroup, grab my finger rest and my under bezel, copy this to clipboard and undo. Paste these back in. Okay, uh, I need to um, come to a solution about the uh, prongs. So, here's my stone. And I think that's a pretty good elevation. I could bring it down a little bit. That's about it. Okay, my prongs are going to come off of uh, roughly here. So, when I place prongs, I always do it with a sphere. I just draw out a sphere that I think looks like a reasonably sized prong for the piece. Mirror it around. See what I think. Do it again with history. So now I can change the size of the prong if I choose to do so. Now that should be pretty good. Find out what the size of those are by coming up and analyzing radius. Uh, it's 1.35 uh, diameter prong. Okay. Going to put a point in the center. I'm going to group these two items together. Lock that shank so I don't keep selecting it. Okay, so I have a good starting point. I need to have the outline of my stone here. Extract ISO curve. If I can find the seam and use mid snap, I can center that right up. I'm going to put a planar surface in here. Set a seaplane. Delete the surface. I want to have the point in the middle of the bead and the bead itself on different layers. And I'm going to move that bead down onto the C plane. I projected the bead to the C plane without deleting the original. 
so that I could use that point as a reference. And of course that moved my bead along with it. Okay. What I need is I need a curve perpendicular um, from my girdle here. I want both sides option. Try that again. Now, the problem that you're going to keep running into when you try and do this is that as soon as you are um, in a non-ortho viewport and you try and run a line perpendicular, um, <clears throat> if you try and use the from start option, see right now it's being fine, you, as soon as you hit F enter, it becomes worthless. Okay, uh, the way to resolve this um, would be to go into a planar view. That's probably the easiest, an orthographic view. And now I can do from point without any issue. From start. And this will allow me to move that prong, that bead, out to where it's just biting into the stone. It will also allow me to extrude a surface straight down and set a seaplane to it. I'm going to save this seaplane. Okay. Doesn't want to let me use a keyboard shortcut, so set C plane, named C planes, save. So now I have access to that C plane whenever I want. This um this is the center of that prong. I'm going to draw a line straight up. I'm going to draw a line that follows along somewhat the taper of the pavilion. Join those together. Draw a third curve end to end. I'm going to rebuild this curve three, third degree, four points. It's my favorite um, curvature for a prong wire. Turn on the points. And I will bring this in to somewhat uh, duplicate the curvature of the prong. Uh, I want to keep the relationship between these two to be that straight line so I have a, a straight entry into the prong. And that looks like about the best I can do. I don't need that point anymore. I'm going to delete that. I want this curve to be able to rotate and intersect exactly that point. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to graphically represent the center of rotation, the circle of rotation, by coming through the end and the point. And now I can transform, rotate, and 
intersect and because I have that circle intersecting my curve wire I know I can follow right along and it will land that wire straight through that point. I'm going to pipe this. I'm going to pipe it 1.3 millimeters diameter for a start and see how I like that. Now that certainly seems robust. Mind you, my bead was larger. But as a prong, it seems very heavy to me. So, try 1.2. Uh, that's better. Okay. I'm going to go down to 1.1. 1 .1. 1.15. I like that. That'll work. So 1.15 is the prong. So now I have to actually draw the cross section for my prong. But before I do that, I'm going to cut my prong off at its proper height. And to do that, I'm going to record history and replace that pipe. And then Bring back my stone and place a cutting plane equal to the elevation of the table. And I'm going to move it up a quarter of a millimeter. And use that to trim off my prong. That should have updated my prong wire accordingly. Given the size of the stone and the size of the prongs, that seems a little bit scant to me. I'm going to move this up another 0.05. Okay. Still seems scant. The, those exact proportions, uh, they vary um, with the overall size of the stone, obviously. I want to feel like I'm giving the setter enough prong wire to set with. That feels good. Okay. So, I've got my prong. It's in location. Um, I would like to have... Uh, C-plane right here at the top of this prong that I can use to draw my prong cross sections properly. I'm going to go to top C-plane. I'm going to project this curve onto that prong. I do not want to delete the input, so delete input equals no. I'm going to set C-plane to the top of my prong. I'm going to draw a ellipse diameter based on that projected section across the edge of my prong and uh, into my prong and I will set a C plane to that. This will line up the grid perpendicular from the edge of the girdle and allow me to draw a proper prong section. Explode the prong. I can delete that. Borrow the outline for this, delete that. Curve tools, straight line, quad, quad, quad both sides, fillet, fillet, trim. 
join. So that gives me my top prong section. Bottom prong section, I'm going to simply orient this. Transform, orient to points, copy yes, scale no. Reference point one and two. Target point, don't want project going on here. One and two. And enter when done or escape in this case. So now I have the bottom with the same section. I can delete that surface, but before I do, I'll set a C plane to it. And I'll use the same trick I used above. Ellipse diameter to orient the grid in C plane more properly. Okay. For this bottom section, I want to scale it narrower here, so I get a taper from the end, from the top to the bottom growing narrower. But I want to taper it wider at the bottom to provide more support for the stone. Okay, so non-uniform scale, origin point, the one place I don't want to change, here at the heel of the prong. I want to narrow this down a little bit. Paper. But I want to extend it under the stone substantially. And a z-axis, no change. Okay. Now, when I did this, I get this strange kind of bullet shape. I don't really want that. So I'm going to draw a... I just exploded that section. I'm going to draw a circle diameter. End to end. And I'm going to move this quad to quad. Throw that away. Pre-select my circle. Extend curve. Circle is now the boundary to extend these two curves too. Grab those curves. Trim. Grab that section. Join. Okay. Now I'm going to do a one rail sweep. I can pick it, pretty much any of these curves I want. I'm going to choose this one. By real sweep, section one, section two. Okay, now these should both be close curves. Properties, close curve, closed curve. Okay, so we shouldn't have a problem. Try again. One rail sweep, select the rail. Select the sections. There we go. That doesn't make any sense to put a seam there. I'm going to put the seam at the corner. Okay. It's a little more aggressive than I wanted. I like the taper from the side, though. So, I'm going to non-uniform scale this back a bit. Of course, I could have had history and done this, but it doesn't really matter. It only takes me a minute. I want no change here. Scale back to about there. Repeat the surfacing command. One rail sweep. Adjust the scene. I think that is an attractive